Hello, people of Earth. It's Amy. Uh, today, I'm going to show you how I measure, how I weigh out yarn so I can tell if I have enough to change color for heels and toes. Let me explain what I'm talking about. So here's a sock, pair of socks I have, I made a long time ago. Still got dog hair in them. Um, see how it's got a black heel and a black toe. Uh, so when I made this pair of socks, obviously, especially since I'm changing toes and heels, I probably had plenty of this left over for another pair of socks, right? But sometimes you get leftovers and you're like, is that enough to use for a heel or a toe? And you're like, I have no idea. Case in point, here's some yarn leftovers. This isn't a full skein. I think it will make a complete pair of short socks, like a like a roll top short sock or a um, pull tab short sock, or maybe even my little scallop. These are I call these these are short. They're not quite as short as those those shorty socks, but I like to make a ribbed short sock for summer. You know, that's that's one of my favorites actually. That's about thirty five rows. If you're wondering what thirty five rows looks like, that's it. Anyway, so I may have enough, but just to be sure, wouldn't it be fun to change change colors with this one? Now this one, I mean, look at that. That's not a whole lot of yarn left. <laughs> so wouldn't it be handy if you knew exactly how much a heel used? How much yarn does a heel use? So then you could weigh your yarn and see if you have enough to change it for your heels and your toes. Now it just so happens I've already done this. So I actually know, let's take a look. Okay, I, I know that this is actually enough for heel and a toe, I'm pretty sure. I'll double check that, I'm pretty sure. So first you need a scale. I have a little jewelry scale. It's made by J Scale, otherwise known as Jennings. I think Jennings is the parent company. This is model is JSR 150. It opens up like this. This actually pops off to make a little tray which is handy if you're gonna make, measure something that's loose, but we don't really need the tray. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So what I need, since my yarn is on cones, I'm gonna take a cone. I'm gonna turn my scale on. Ah. I'm gonna turn my scale on, and let's weigh my cone. My cone weighs almost 30 grams, 29.7. So I'm gonna actually hit my tear button, which zeroes out the weight. So now it's as if, it's as if nothing is on there. This is like, um, like your cooking scale. If you put a bowl and then you tear it out and then you can add ingredients and measure the ingredients and it doesn't measure how big the bowl is. Same thing. So that is my cone and they're all, I've done this a lot. They're all pretty much that same size, but even a, a tenth of a gram off, it's not gonna be a big deal. So now it's not gonna count this cone when I pop this on. So my total yarn that is on this cone is 14, ooh, it just changed, 14.8, maybe 14.9, 14.9, close enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write that down on my little scratch pad. Let me get a pen, pencil. So I'm gonna measure the heel. Um, before it was, what is it again? 14.9, 14.9. And then I'm gonna knit my heel and then I'm gonna measure my yarn again. And we'll write that number down. And then when we subtract that number from the, our original number, we'll know exactly how much yarn in weight it takes to make one heel. So we're gonna take this number, we're gonna minus it, and we'll get this number, and then we got a times two because there's two heels in a pair of socks, right? One for each sock. And then that will give us the total weight in this yarn. It's gonna vary per yarn, but it's gonna be close enough. In this yarn to make a heel. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the toe. So let's get to it. It's exciting stuff. So I already have a sock on my machine. I actually planned ahead, you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm making a pair of socks for my niece, Clara. 
I'm actually in a bit of a hurry because I want to get these boxes mailed and this is the last pair of socks I need to go in the box. So I'm going to try and get this video done, Kitchener the socks, pop them in the box and go over to the post office before it closes. Um, so I've already done my pre, pre heel. I've already done 30 rows. It's actually leg rows. Why don't I fix it? Why not? I did 30 rows of the leg and then I did 15 pre heel, pre -heel rows and now I'm ready to change. I'm not actually going to use this blue, this pink. This was just an example one because I actually, I'm not quite sure if I do have enough on there. So this is why I'm doing this whole thing so that I can, I think I do. Anyway, I'm actually going to go with this blue because I know I've got plenty for heels and toes. Look at that. That's, that's tons. So I'm, I don't want to risk it on these pair of socks, but so let's measure that again. Let's zero this guy out. If you just set it on here as it loads up, it'll also be zero. I'm going to erase this before because that was for that pink yarn. And let's measure this pretty blue yarn. So I have about 32.1 grams, 32.1 grams on my yarn, on my cone. Now we're going to make the heel. So Let's switch that over. Let me move my camera. Oof, da. Zoom out. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to turn that scale off. Why waste a battery, right? So I'm at the very end of the pre heel. So I wanted, I stopped over here because I'm going to change yarns right over here and I, I didn't want to miss it. I actually had to, I actually made the sock and started doing the heel and had to stop and restart. Blah! So where's my scissors? So I'm going to change yarn now, which is always a pain in the butt when the ribber is on. Am I right? You're right, Amy. Mm. Line that up. Let's get my new yarn in here. Okay. I haven't actually changed yarn in a while. Well, I did it like recently, but it was like on a, I don't think I had the ribber on at that time. So it is way easier without the ribber. <sighs> but I shall persevere, shall I? Yes, I shall. So I'm holding that while that goes down. And now I'm putting on my heel spring. And there is Lycra in here. I've got to get that in the slot. So I'm overlapping it by three needles. Oh, and I got to set up for my heel. So the river goes out of work and I'm going to lift these back needles. I would have had to start this video over again. Okay, is that right? There's my target, there's my target. We are good and the river is out. Okay, so now I'm just going to um, tuck these ends in to my cylinder. I like to use that little part of my pick to just kind of say, hey little fella, go on inside there. Like that. Scooch out of the way. When I get this sock off the machine, I'll have to weave those ends in, which is a bummer. I'd much rather do it on the machine, but what are you going to do? Sometimes I do do it on the machine when I have a river, but not today. Okay, so let's do my heel. Lift that one up. Let's get my heel forks. I apologize. I'm sniffing a lot today. I think I've got some allergies going on. It just rained here the other day, so you'd think they'd be settled down, but no. Sniffity sniff sniff. I thought I was like good, and I stopped taking Claritin every day, and then my nose started running. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess I need to keep taking the Claritin. Okay, so that's up. My heel forks are on.
I had a piece of paper on top of my lycra. I didn't like it. Okay. Good, good, good. This is so handy to like have a good idea of how much yarn goes into a heel and a toe. Of course, it is going to be different depending on the yarn. Like if you have a 400 yard, 100 grams equals 400 yards, that's a pretty thick yarn and it's going to weigh more than this one, which is... I don't know what it is. It's Rolana. I think it's like in the 430s or 440s. So it is going to be different, but it's still nice to have a ballpark to aim for, you know. If you put a couple grams, if it needs like 14 grams and you have 15, then you, you're pretty safe, I would say. It's time to move these forks up. supposed to lift both of those. I'm going to unknit this stitch real quick. Actually, I'm going to unknit them all real quick. It'll just take a second. I'm grabbing my heel forks and I'm setting them on my knee. Except that one fell rolled off. I guess I got to take these off. <laughs> I'm just going to roll off my knee. Taking those off. And yeah, it is worth it to me to have this go right. And also, Tinking is really easy if you don't lift any needles, and the, if the stitch is below the latch, it's really hard to tink. But look how easy this is when they're above the latch. Super easy. Let's not make that mistake again, though. So that one is undone. I'm lifting it. So now it's going to go over both of those. Now what? Now what? Now what? The problem with this is my yarn carrier, because the river is on, I can't, like, just... Can I? No, I can't. I got to get this back around. So I'm going to lift. I'm going to remember that this is where I'm at, the red needles. I'm going to lift these needles out of work. Bring my yarn carrier back around. Pop this back in my yarn carrier. Oh my goodness. Looks so easy. Now I'm going to, oh shoot. I did drop it. I did drop it one stitch over here. Damn. Remember how I was all like, guys, this is going to be super quick, fast video so I can mail stuff. Actually, it's all right. I just can knit this one by hand. And how do you do that? See how? See how this stitch is here and this isn't knit? Pull it out a little and get your pick in that stitch that's on there. And then you just pop it over. Done. Open that lash because that'll drop another stitch. Okay, so we're all good now. I'm lowering all the needles red to the red, to these red. And now these two go up. See, before I only did one, but I need two. Okay, heel forks back on. I definitely don't want to fudge the heel. I mean, I, I'm fine with just, you know, it doesn't, I didn't have to tink that back. It was to be fine. But um, if I'm measuring, if I'm weighing the yarn specifically for the heel, then I don't, maybe don't want to fudge it <laughs> at this time, at this juncture. Okay. 
So now it's done too. These are all gonna knit. Okay, good, good. Two more. Two more. Two more. Okay, I'm gonna lift up my heel forks the last time. Make sure they're really in there. Okay, now I'm gonna increase. I'm doing a suicide wrap. Because I'm crazy. Watch out for Amy, she's wild. I am wild. I mean, have you seen the socks I wear? I'm a wild woman. I'm convinced that the trick to suicide wrap is lowering the needle to just the right spot. If you go too low, you're gonna drop a stitch. If you go too high, it's not gonna wrap. But once you get the hang of it, it's all good. You can be wild with me. I would love to hear suggestions from you guys on what you would like to see. If there's something you'd like to see, Leave a comment and tell me. I'd love I'd love some ideas because sometimes I'm like, well, what should I make a video about now? Just making a sock? I mean, I can do that. I can make lots of socks. But when I thought, hey, I don't have enough yarn to make that sock, I thought, oh, there's a video idea. Way the sock yarn. I'm on my last two passes now. Wrapping this around its standing neighbor. And this guy around his standing neighbor. Okay, and now I gotta remember I'm changing yarns again. And I gotta do this in front here before I go back there because then I'll have some of my heel yarn on the top of my foot. And I don't want that. Sometimes I do. I have done that before. It's pretty cute actually. But not on this sock. So I'm gonna reset my counter, put this in work. So I'm all ready for the foot body, but I still have to change yarns. So let's do that. I'm taking off my heel spring. Gonna snip my yarn. Jab this guy out. And let's get my cone yarn over here. I don't trust myself. I have just a little bit. I had to frog a sock. And that's not going to get me through the whole sock. And I'm afraid I'm going to like drop stitches when I run out. So I'm just going to go to my cone. That's why I'm doing that. I have too many things to keep in my brain at the time. <laughs> I can't keep that in my brain too. <laughs> okay. This will work. I'm holding that until this goes down. Now I'm putting on my heel spring. This cone is so big, let me just make sure nothing is bumping up against it. It's centered under my yarn thingy. Okay, let's get this all out of the way. That first row after the heel, you know, it's nerve wracking. Okay, I'm gonna tuck these guys in and then we will do some more weighing. I just want to do this though so I don't forget. So when I come back, it's ready to go. Tuck, 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 tuck. Okay, so let's go back over here and see how much the yarn weighs now. So let's zero it out. I'm going to wind that up. While it's booting. Twenty-eight point 
28.3. I'm cheating. Cheater. Let's just get the count calculate because I have performance anxiety. I will not be able to do simple math while I'm recording. So I'm just doing it by hand. So that means this heel took 3.8 grams of yarn times two. That wasn't right. 3.8 grams of yarn times two. That means 7.6 grams needed for a heel. So let me just look. I'm just curious if this is enough yarn for a heel. 7.6 is what I need. Look, I could do four heels. Now let's do it for the toe. So I'm going to do my foot body on this sock, and then I'm going to measure, do the same thing. I'm going to, ooh, I'm going to measure. I'm going to, we'll, we'll weigh the yarn before and after the toe. I already have the before, so just the after. So now my plan is what? I did my heel blue. I switched back to active yarn. I'm doing 68 rows, but I got to take my river off on row 63. So river is in. Everything is going. My counter is reset. 63 rows. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ooh. Have some of my lovely beverage. It's a Coke. It's a Diet Coke from Mickey D's. It's the little things in life. The fountain drinks. I like Diet Coke, but I don't like it from a can. And I don't like it from like a liter bottle. I like it from the fountain. <laughs> it's so weird. It tastes better. So nowadays, if I go out somewhere, this morning I had to take my 16-year-old to the high school. Um... The high school has been closed, of course. School ended last week. Um, my 18-year-old graduated a couple weeks ago. That was fun. Um, oh, my cat is trying to get in. I locked the door so he couldn't. So anyway, um, whenever I go out and about, for example, this morning we had to go to the school to empty out stuff from the classroom, that kind of stuff. And, of course, we run by the fast food joint to get <laughs> some fountain drinks and I text everyone at home who wants a soda and everyone was like me 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 I don't know why I text I should just get the soda I'm not I we don't like I don't well my husband does my husband we keep some soda in the house for my husband he drinks some coke zero and some regular coke but I grew up not drinking soda unless it was like out you know if you were going out to dinner you could have a soda then if we went to fast food, you could have a soda then. It was not very often. And I kind of just, we kind of adopted that same thing for our kids, for our family. But although I go, I, I don't know, I should just break down and I do sometimes. I buy a two liter of soda for the kids sometimes as a treat. Nothing like a root beer float, you know. You can't make yourself a, a root beer float unless you got some root beer at home. Ooh, 61 rows. I'm going for 63. Two more rows. 62 rows. 63 rows. Let's change this guy out. Getting on my stuff over here. You guys want to see? Ish. Yeah, my son graduated. It's unbelievable. I can't believe my baby is out of high school. <laughs> it's unreal. It's actually, um, you know, we, our school is, the school is closed. And I think they are planning to do some sort of ceremony in July in the stadium with social distancing. But in the meantime, they had, they scheduled six kids per half hour. And made every, you know, social distanced. Everyone had to wear a mask. It was only parents allowed. Their little sister could not come. Their little sibling could not come. The 16-year-old. Um, 
he crossed the stage. He shook the principal's hand. He got his diploma. It was wonderful. I cried. It was really weird because it's not your typical <laughs> graduation. Whoa, look how pretty that is. But, um, yeah, but it's, I, it's actually kind of funny because my son, oh, caught the, caught my light. My son is pretty introverted. He's a loner kid. And honestly, he would have hated the regular ceremony. So this worked out pretty well for our family. All right. So I'm at row 63. I'm going to do my yarn change at 65 and I'm going to start my toe at 68 after 68 so let's get up to 65 four five and now let's change the yarn let's change this yarn baby huzzah move that out of the way somewhere I'm just going to weigh the yarn real quick. Even though I do have that weight, it should be the same. I don't know why I'm weighing it again. But hey, why not, you know? It should be 28.3. And sure enough, it's 28.3. Okay, so let's go with that. And these, you're obviously going to need a little more yarn than exactly what it takes to go into the heel or toe. Because you have to like have some that goes up through your yarn, uh, what's it called, the yarn mast. And, you know, if you were too close, it would really <laughs> hurt your sock if you ran out of yarn. So I would definitely take this with a grain of salt. <laughs> And add a little extra but it's good to have a ballpark figure you know okay let's get these guys tucked in I like to pull it a little snug and then wrap it around this is a very small little tail I think I'll just hold this one go oh look at me I'm not even on the right camera sorry you guys okay so that is row 66 and we're gonna stop at 68 which is right here now let's do the toe I like to have a couple of rows around when I do my toe just because when you Kitchener um, if this is a different color, it just is a little tricky. Also, it makes choosing your waist yarn easier if you've got the same, especially, you know, if you've got the same color going throughout. Where are my toe forks? Oh, they're lower here, down here on my, <laughs> they're on the sock, dum dum. Okay. Heel forks in. That one is up, I'm ready to go. pick pick let's not forget to uh, raise two needles when I get to the red <laughs> the last four that'd be good too so no no tinking should be involved You know what I find to be one of the hardest parts of making these videos is how to title them on YouTube. And now I'm sitting here thinking, how am I going to title this? Weighing your sock remnants, <laughs> weighing your sock leftover, your yarn leftovers to see if you have enough for a heel or toe. See, that's pretty wordy. I, I've got to have, I've got to work that down somehow. Do I have enough for a heel or a toe? How I do it. I don't know. That doesn't sound good either. 
Moving my forks, moving my forks, moving my forks. That one's already up. Yes. With this guy. Lift this guy. Still one. I'm still okay. Now I do two. One, two. One, two. Oh, these forks really need to move. I better do that. I'd hate to mess up right at the end. Those are up. Okay. I'm going to move these just a smidge up again. I can't really. Okay. Let's get going. Last half of my toe. How to know if you have enough yarn left for your heels and toes. <laughs> I just dropped a stitch. <laughs> Can I fix it? <sighs> Son of a bee. There's the stitch right there. So I caught it. I think I can fix this even though this is a corner stitch which makes it a real pain in the butt so I'm gonna take this yarn out and I got to work this back it's gonna be hard let me show you how I do this Oh, come on, Felton. Okay. Let me make sure you can see what I do when I do it. Okay, so see all these little feet? See these little feet down here? They gotta come up. And I would really like this to unknit. Yes. Yes. Oh, I think we're gonna save the day here. It's gonna be okay. So when it won't go back, why is that? It's because it's hitting these feet. So I gotta slowly lift the feet and move it back and lift the feet and move it back and lift the feet and move it back. And now I'm back. See how that worked? Woohoo! Okay, don't woohoo yet, Amy. You're not out of the woods yet. So I've got that stitch there. I'm gonna pop it back on its proper needle. Ugh. The latch keeps wanting to close. It's because the lycra is there. Get this lycra out of the you probably can't even see it, but it was there. Okay. Get this needle back on here. <sighs> the stitch, I mean, not needle. 
Okay, so that is back on there. Now this was raised when I made this pass across here. It was lifted. And so this went across like this. Let's put this back in the yarn carrier. Okay, so this was lifted. I'm gonna just lower these all a little bit. And then I lowered it to do my suicide wrap. And this latch closed, or I don't know what happened, but it did not catch the yarn going back. So I think I'm good. Let's just count to be sure. Here's my black three o'clock mark on this thin. One, two, and three, this needle about to be raised. I'm gonna just check real quick. On the other side, one, two, three. So I think I'm good. I fixed it. I saved the day. Huzzah. Oh, you guys, I've been watching that great show on Hulu, and they say huzzah like every three seconds. So I apologize for all the huzzahs, but it's in my brain. Okay, let's just not take any chances and manually wrap that bad boy behind. Yes, good idea. Oh. Look how nervous I am now. <laughs> I'm still doing my suicide rap for the rest, though. <laughs> but I'm going to watch it like a hawk. Now, I wonder if I missed something because there is like a little hole forming right there. But you know what? I think it's the same as these ones over here. I think actually it's fine. All right, that's the last needle. I'm going to lower them on both sides. Make my last pass. All right. Woohoohoo. I'm going to just do a little bit more bird's eye view here. Let's get this heel spring off. Let's get my uh, lycra removed. I'm doing taupe, taupe lycra, which I hate. I hate this stuff. It like doesn't, it's different than like black or white. It's not as like tight. And also it catches on freaking everything. So I don't use it that often, but this one I figured I should use taupe because the black wouldn't have looked good in the blue and the white wouldn't have looked good with this really dark yarn. So what do you get to do? All right, I'm cutting my Kitchener. And because I'm eager, I'm over eager, let's get right to the weighing. It's the whole point of this video anyway, right? So let's do it. Okay. What a mess. Let's see how much we got left on this cone. Twenty five point oh. So twenty five point oh. And before it was twenty eight point three. We're gonna minus and I'm gonna cheat because performance anxiety clear. Twenty eight point three. Let me just get rid of that thing. Minus 25 equals 3.3 .3 times 2, because there's going to be two socks, not just one. And that is 6.6. .6. So I need enough yarn. I need at least 6.6 .6 grams, probably more, to make toes on your socks. So I can also use this and say, uh, I can also say, if I want to do heel and toe, 7.6 plus 6.6, .6, that's going to be 14.2. Uh, Performance anxiety. Is that right? I think that is right. 
Okay, so um, so if I was going to do a heel and a toe, so for example, if I was going to make these socks with this yarn, and I'm like, how much yarn do I need to do the heel and the toe? Well, let me just look. I need 14.2. Of course, this yarn is different, and I, this is definitely thinner than my blue yarn. So... I think I'm actually going to be better off because this probably will take less in weight than that stuff over there. So, let's see if I have enough. What's the magic number? It was 14.2. 14.9. That's cutting it close. But I think I'll be all right since that stuff is thicker for sure. So, I think that's going to be a go for those. The other thing you can also do is... Let me find it. And I have done this on my sheet on my own little weight sheet is you can do the same thing for this cuff if you make if you like to make these short socks um, this is a fun thing to have an alternating cuff I just made a pair of socks for my sister that were short like this and I did a pink top and then pink toe in this pink and this yarn it was super cute I was on Facebook anyway um so you can do the same thing way your coney yarn do your cuff hang your hem change the yarns weigh it again and then you know how much yarn you need for one of these little cuffs so i hope that is helpful for you guys um let me just tell you about the scale um i bought it and i'll put this in the comments as well i bought it from a great company that's actually here in colorado and it's called old will not scales and it's not like k-n-o-t-t -T. Old Will Not Scales, and I'll put a link. And this is a pretty affordable little scale. It's, I want to say it's about $30, maybe under. I'll check. And it's model JSR150, and they are a great company. I've bought a couple of scales from them, and they're always fantastic. I even, like, called them up and said, I don't think this is going to work for me, and they helped me find the one that would. So I love that company. All right, I think that wraps it up for today. Let me, let me uh, pull back the curtain here, guys. I actually have already done this. Oops. I've already done this, and I think it was with one of these thinner yarns because the numbers are different. <laughs> here it is on my cork board. Yarn weight. Two toes needed 4.2. Whereas here, look, two toes was actually 6.6. .6. It's because this stuff is heavier. I think I might go with this in the future. Uh, let's see. Two heels needed, 8.3. Two heels, 7.6. So as I was saying, it's going to change depending on the yarn. So now I actually am going to be, I'm going to actually write the name of the yarn at the top and put this on my board as well. And I'll probably eventually order, um, weigh the tab cuffs, which I did on my, little, my own little cheat sheet, which is 9.9. .9. So I highly recommend just getting a general weight for your heels and toes and a little scale because that way you can, like, you can knit without fear because I was going to definitely make these, but I was going to be scared. <laughs> it's like yarn chicken on crack. <laughs> so I hope this helps with your yarn chicken games, people of earth. Have a good day. Love y'all. Bye.